Well, I think what I'm more proud of than anything is the fact that I was a real person when I came into Congress eight years ago. I'm still the same real person today. I had no filter over what I said or what I did. When I was at home as a wife and a mom in the kitchen, listening to Rush Limbaugh and people that I admired on the radio, I remember thinking, what is wrong with those bird brains in Congress? Why don't they do what they said they were going to do when we send them there? I was not political, but I thought if I ever went to Congress, I would. that's exactly what I would do. And that's what I did. I mean, I rolled the dice. And I gave it everything I had. I have worked like a maniac for the eight years that I've been here. When my feet hit the ground in the morning, I work. I work until I go to sleep. And I think that's what I'm proudest of because I put everything on the line. I put all my chips on this country and I gave it everything. I couldn't have worked harder than what I worked. And I was at the tip of the spear warning people on the $700 billion bailout. I took on George Bush and opposed him on that. I was against the automobile bailout. I was against... Um, the stimulus, I fought on that. I fought on Obamacare. I fought against Dodd-Frank. I fought on all these issues. And then the last four, year ish four years, I've completely devoted myself to foreign policy and national security and intelligence matters, dealing with this up-tempo and the rise of Islamic Jihad and a nuclear Iran. So I am grateful on every major issue that has been facing our country. I've been out there on the front line on these issues, advocating for what I believe is the right position and where I think the American people are at on this issue. I gave it, I fought, I did, and I'm not done. I'm just going to change arenas now. And instead of being holding elective office, now I'll be fighting from the outside. I'll be writing. I'll be speaking across the country at different venues. I'll be on media. I'll be associating with different groups. I absolutely um, love and have always had a link to Israel. I spent my first summer in Israel in 1974. I worked on a kibbutz in Beersheba and the Negev. And um, so I've always had this deep love. I'm a believer in Jesus Christ. And I, I truly believe, as Genesis says and teaches us, that those are blessed that bless Israel. And I think that we need to remember that, that the United States has been singularly blessed because we've always had Israel's back. And that's what's really concerned me about President Obama's policies toward Israel, because this is the first president that's ever cut the legs out of the Jewish state. We've never had a president who's done that since Harry Truman wisely recognized the sovereignty of the Jewish state in May of 1948. Every president, including Jimmy Carter, has actually backed Israel. Now, Jimmy Carter has been less supportive of Israel after he left office, but the, most of the presidents have been there for Israel. This is the first president, in my estimation, who is anti-Israel. That, that pretends negative consequences for the United States and for the Jewish state, and I think it's very, very important.